evening everyone welcome back to another video i'm just joining uh is it coco coco cadence for a quick lap um of the sands on zwift uh, i want to talk to you today about getting back into training after a prolonged period of illness or injury obviously i'm in a very relevant situation to explain something like this and sometimes the prospect of getting back into training after a prolonged period can be quite daunting to give you some context I've had about a month off the bike uh, because of illness and I'm looking at somewhere between a 60 watt drop on my FTP which I've gone from about 375 watt FTP to about 325 watt FTP <laughs> actually like the Christmas period is a very like is a very slack period for, for most of us I think you know we have lots of things that crop up basically basically what I want to say is a couple of do's and don'ts when it comes to getting back into training and these are going to vary from person to person and they're also going to vary between like fitness levels and how long you've had off and of course why you've had that off period like were you injured uh were you ill um or were you just having a break if you're having a break to be honest you can probably be a little bit more adventurous when you get back into things than those of us who have been injured or ill so i've probably been guilty of jumping back into training really quickly after a period off the bike and it's something that i don't ever do anymore is actually have time off and the reason why i don't have time off is because i i hate to upset the equilibrium that you have when you're riding your bike and you enjoy riding your bike and when you have the time off you put yourself back to square one and you've almost got to kind of get yourself going again to get back to where you were and that in itself is demotivating um, you can be motivated by it but when you think about it you're like I've got so far to go to get back to there it can be a little bit demoralizing and I get it so there's a couple of essentials one start and build slowly two back off if you start to feel anything that's slightly wrong i.e. you know niggles uh, the injury maybe reappearing or something rest is important don't neglect it and all is not lost because technically you have a long time to train you know most of us have longer than we think and most of us have more time than we think and we can actually rely on our bodies to do the right thing most of the time some of us can return to top training or interval sessions a lot quicker than others something that i like to implement is have a couple of weeks where you do unstructured training unstructured riding you just have some fun you know i don't know do a couple of rides or routes rather that you haven't done in ages because you've had this off period um scenic rides or something i like to do actually quite a lot is scenic rides i know people say oh you know like take your wahoo off and like put it in your back pocket but I, I still like seeing speed you know and maybe you could just change it to speed and just have that but I quite like having just something there you know here's a good one talk to somebody or talk to a coach or talk to your community or talk to people who you think have been in the situation before and get their view on it get their view on the situation you're in and how they think you can best approach your way back to full fitness don't forget to watch out for overuse injuries because bearing in mind if you've been off the bike for a month like me you might not be familiar with what a pedal stroke is i'm still kind of like getting to terms with just that smooth kind of pushing and pulling motion and at first and this is like my fourth ride back i was like what on earth am i doing 
And then my body started to make the connection again, and now I remember. And it's still taking four rides, you know, which is, people always say it's like riding a bicycle, but obviously not, it's taking me four rides. Actually, one thing I forgot to mention, a bit of a pro tip in amongst these, when you're getting back into it, especially if you're training with power and heart rate, ignore power, ignore power. Um, it's gonna mess with your head a little bit and you're far better off um, almost being like conservative uh, and really lower your FTP. Um, you know, for me, I dropped mine from, you know, 370-ish to, to around about 325. That's going off past experience on what I usually lose after a month of no riding. Um, but also a lot of analysis software, you know, training analysis software will be able to um, guess that for you as well. Um, but yeah, pay attention more to your heart rate than your power, which is, I wouldn't usually say that, but under this circumstance, like heart rate is like your friend because just like you would during that period of illness, you'll see your heart rate rise. You'll see, um, you know, a, a, a higher average resting heart rate usually. Um, that will transfer to when then you get on the bike. Um, your heart rate might be 20 beats higher for the same power that you're usually used to. Um, and what I tell you is like, ignore it. Um, you know, drop the FTP. Um, you're far better off underestimating your FTP than overestimating it. And train to heart rate and train to feel for a few weeks. Um, you'll really thank yourself for it because you'll be able to monitor your actual output via you know, rate of perceived exertion, i.e. how hard it feels, coupled with your heart rate, and the power wouldn't, won't really tell you much. You know, it won't really tell you much the first few rides because you won't really have anything to compare it to because it's dropped by, you know, potentially so much. So anyway, back to the, back to the video. Obviously the downtime that you now have gives you an opportunity, a very good opportunity to write down some new goals. Doesn't matter if they're different to the ones that you maybe had written down already, but they give you a new outlook, a fresh look, and you've had more time to think potentially. Plus you're able to set smaller goals because now you're at technically a lower level. But don't forget that if you are kind of all good to train and get back to it, you may well be ticking off sessions very quickly on your way back up because you'll be fresher, you'll be motivated, um, and you'll just be raring to go to get back to where you were. So be prepared for both ways really, but be prepared to hit a lot of PBs. Okay, now time for the things that I don't recommend necessarily, and that is, oh hang on, hang on, I better get back onto the group. I've been dropped. Okay, that's something you shouldn't do. Don't deviate from the plan. <laughs> okay, granted, that was only for 10 seconds just to get back into the group, but don't compare your training or performances to others. It goes without saying you shouldn't be doing that anyway. I mean, you can, you know, because it's good, but take it all with a pinch of salt. It's like when we look on Instagram and we think that everybody has become famous in five minutes but you haven't seen the last seven years of the training by the way there's a video up there for you to watch my last seven years also on the same note don't try and catch up on missed training and don't put off and don't put off trying to get back on the bike any longer than you need to so i'll give you a really good example i crashed in canada in a stage race called the tour de Beauce about two years ago and okay I, I was very demotivated after six or seven weeks off the bike I didn't really know what I wanted to do I didn't really know for a start when I should get back on the bike I had no like health issues no injuries nothing nothing was stopping me apart from this inner dialogue and I actually went to see the team doctor at the time and he quizzed me a little bit and he said, 
why aren't you back on the bike? And the answers I gave him were crap. <laughs> and he said, just get out and ride for 15 minutes. Like, I don't care if you have to get kitted up in full winter kit and get out there for 15 minutes. Get out there and ride and see what you feel like. Weirdly enough, I did those 15 minutes, then I did half an hour, then I did an hour. And I realized that actually, there was nothing stopping me from getting back on the bike. So yeah, to summarize, don't worry. Don't worry, like come and watch me suffer in a couple of weeks time, or even now trying to get back to my fitness. We're all in this boat together. Um, if you're watching this in 2025, um, you would have seen the videos after this. If you enjoyed this video, guys, if it helped in any way, please leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below, ask any questions you like. We have a great community of people who are in very similar situations, believe it or not. Uh, and they will, they will help in any way they can. So that's it from me. Thank you for watching. I'm going back to Zwift now. I'll see you in the next one.